One of my favorite things to do in Logic is to use my incoming MIDI data that I'm playing on my keyboard to create some automated panning. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this TNT. The first thing we're going to do is create a new instrument object. These objects were originally designed to address external MIDI instruments. So I like to use them as starting points for Logic's MIDI constructions. And of course, I always like to name my objects. Now, this instrument object, when I connect it to a channel, brings up this little box that asks you whether you want to remove the port settings. And you say remove because we're not addressing external instruments. So the MIDI has to flow from this instrument object into this channel. And the way you do that is you have to set up a track for this panner instrument so that MIDI data can flow from our external controller to the panner instrument. So I've created a new track, and now with my MIDI through tool, with that track selected, I'll click on the panner, and you'll see that now we have a track assigned to the panner. And it's playing the EVD6 in the instrument track above it. Okay, so we have our MIDI pathway kind of set up. Now let's start building a panning environment. But you know what? I want to make sure that you understand how MIDI flows through Logic. In the clicks and ports layer, we have the physical input, which is all of the MIDI controllers connected to your computer. And they pass through to the sequencer input, which is, in actuality, your arrange page, and specifically the MIDI track that is selected on your arrange page. So if I select the Kodo string track and play, you're going to hear that instrument. However, my panner track is also connected to that instrument, right? And if I play that, you'll hear the same thing because they're both playing the same soft synth, the EVD6 that's patched into that channel. So beginning with this panner object, I've created a new pathway to reach that channel. And in that pathway, I can insert all kinds of cool objects to manipulate the MIDI. So here I have a monitor and a transformer object. I'm going to take the output of that channel into the monitor so I can see the MIDI data passing through that channel. And you can see that I get note ons and note offs. Whenever I press my keyboard, I get a note on. And when I release the keyboard, I get a note off. And those note offs can cause some problems because they're equal to a velocity of zero. And that zero data can screw up some things, and you'll see that later on. Next, I'm going to play with a transformer. And as you know by now, transformer objects transform MIDI data into other types of MIDI data. So I'm going to insert this transformer in the pathway between our track and our channel. But you know what? I'm going to do something else just to show you how these instruments work. I'm going to reconnect it and then send a copy a malt of that data to the transformer. So I've double clicked on the transformer and I'm going to select condition splitter, which means that only the data that meets the conditions will pass out of the top cable. So let's set some conditions. We're going to say the status, it has to equal a note and its velocity, and this is very, very important, has to unequal zero. And I do that because what that does is get rid of all of those node offs because those note offs equal zero. So now it's only going to pass notes that have a velocity that don't equal zero. Pretty clever. So we've set up our selection conditions. Now let's figure out the operation we're going to do on those. First of all, we're going to take those notes and we're going to fix them to control data. So now notes will become control data. So those notes that I split off from the panner object are now going to become control data which I can use in conjunction with the notes that are still going to the EVD6 to do some cool stuff. Now this row where it says pitch up above becomes the parameter setting when you're talking about controls. So we have to pick a control parameter that those notes are going to be transformed into. And we want them to be transformed into pan data, which is MIDI controller number 10. Now, Byte number two up there in the conditions is velocity. 
and we're going to allow that to pass through and become the value of the pan data. So now I'll take that transformed MIDI data and plug it into the same channel strip. So those notes that I play that are controlling pitch, their velocity will create panning. How cool is it to be able to change panning with your velocities? But what if you wanted your panning to be controlled by the pitch of the note? Well, somehow you have to get that pitch data over here to the value data of the pan operation so that low notes will be panned left and notes of a higher pitch will be panned right. If you click the line right here, you can switch how things are being patched together. And if you click it twice, like I just did, pitch data is now being sent to be transformed into pan data. You can see the knob moving on the channel strip and you can hear it panning. This is a very cool way to get a mono instrument to spread itself out into a stereo field. And you can do all kinds of other stuff with it. You can randomize it, whatever. In the next tutorial, I'm going to introduce an arpeggiator to really jumble up this stuff. So, let's go.